Day, brothers and sisters. I'd like to welcome you to JCC Sunday Schools in session where Sunday school matters to God. Please like and leave us a comment. Also, subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell beside subscribe to be notified of new materials. Also, I need your help this week. We're looking to expand the YouTube ministry efforts and would love to hear from you on identifying what is needed today. Please leave us a comment and say what you would like for us to provide more of. It could be more than prayer, Bible study, discipleship training, daily devotionals, or what the Bible says about real life issues concerning today. Please leave us a, some feedback in the comment section so we can take it to God in prayer and prayerfully begin a new chapter in JCC's ministry. Our lesson is coming from 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, verses 7 through 18, entitled Glory of the New Covenant. Today, our lesson is going to show us the glory and superiority of the new covenant versus the old covenant known as the law. Paul in this lesson will show why we are blessed to be under the new covenant of God. Let's get into the lesson and see what it has to offer us today. Verses 7 through 11 read, But if the ministration of death, written and engraved in stone, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses or the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doeth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in the respect by reason of the glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. Question one and two ask us, what terms does Paul use to describe the Old Covenant and the New Covenant? In order to explain the difference between the Old and the New Covenant, Paul makes a comparison here. Paul describes the Old Covenant as the ministry of death that was carved in stone, and the New Covenant is the ministry of the Spirit which gives life. See, the Old Covenant had no saving power and this is why Paul calls it the ministry of death. The law only could condemn and not save. All who wanted to live under the law became aware of their own sinfulness and their inability to obey God. Since our sins deserve eternal death and separation from God, the old covenant provided the awareness that those who followed it lived under a death sentence because the law could not save us. Question three asks us, how did the old covenant fulfill its purpose then? The Old Covenant fulfilled God's purpose by showing the people they could not please Him on their own effort. We cannot please God by our own efforts as well. So God sent His Son, and by this, God's grace provides all we need to please Him in His Son, not of ourselves. We accomplish everything through the strength of Christ with the help of the Holy Spirit to please God. The Old Covenant's purpose was to reveal personal sin and pointed out to the person a need for a Savior. Christ was that righteous sacrifice that appeased God's wrath against sin and thus became our Savior. And this is why the Old Covenant could not fulfill the purpose that God had for us. Question four says, how should we view the law in terms of obedience? The law is not compartmented or set up in categories. No, it's a reflection of God's complete holiness and the righteousness he requires from us. With that in mind, we see the law as a whole and not in parts. It's complete and again, not set up in compartments. So to be obedient to the law, a person could not violate one part without breaking the whole law and their sinfulness deserved death. This was virtually impossible to keep the whole law for a man who has Adam's sinful nature passed down through them. This is another reason to illustrate the righteousness or that righteous nature of Christ and why he was born in such a way without the DNA of sin in him. He came from righteousness and thus lived a divine righteous life on earth. His blood was pure, so thus the shedding of his blood being pure righteousness made it so no other sacrifice is needed to save us from sin. Why? Because he was pure righteousness. He was a lamb without spot or blemish. And he, his sacrifice was ultimately all we needed. Question five says, why were the children of Israel unable to look at Moses' face? The old covenant was delivered with the glory of God. 
And that glory was reflected as a supernatural glow on Moses' face after he had been in the presence of the glory of God. That reflected glory terrified the people, even as it faded away from Moses' face. Why? They recognized themselves as not being worthy of the glory of God because they saw their own sinfulness. The point to take home from this is that the glory of Moses' face faded. It was only temporary. But the glory of God now is represented in Christ, which will not fade away. Christ fulfills so many things for us, and the glory of God in Christ lasts for eternity. This is why Paul is saying to us, if the ministry of death came in a glorious way, how much more is the glory of the Spirit? The ministry of the Spirit is eternal and is far more powerful. As a result, it is far more better than the Old Covenant. The point we want to bring for this is God's glory made Moses' face shine under the Old Covenant, but the glory of the Holy Spirit dwelling in a New Testament believer is far greater. Because why? We have a greater one that came. Jesus Christ now is the glory of God. And with him living on the inside of us, he resonates and emanates out from us. So that glory there is far better than any glory that you can get in the Old Covenant. Question six is, why did the glory of the new covenant far exceed the glory of the old covenant? Christ is the reason for the glory of the new covenant. Righteousness is much greater than condemnation, and life is preferred over death. The new covenant brought about liberty and freedom, whereas the old covenant brought about bondage and oppression. The new covenant is different for us, brothers and sisters. God offers forgiveness of sins to all who come to him through faith in Jesus Christ. By his grace, he gives credit for Christ's righteous life and takes Christ's death on the cross as payment for our sins. He places his Holy Spirit in all of us who trust in him and trust in Christ. In this way, we guarantee us eternal life with the glory of God emanating through us. Paul now describes this in the ministry of righteousness. Paul says, because God declares believers to be righteous in Christ now, no condemnation can remain in us as a result of it. Since all those in Christ will share in his glory for eternity, it's no wonder why Paul declares that the ministry of righteousness will far exceed the ministry of condemnation in glory. The glory was reflected in Moses' face. Yes, it came from that personal relationship he had with God in that aspect of being in the presence of God. And this glory now in the new covenant, the covenant that God offers by grace and mercy is for all who trust in Christ. And as we receive that grace and mercy, we receive the glory of God and we also get the gift of eternal life. See, God forgives the sin once and for all. Everyone who believes in Christ, believes in his death, They are covered from the the guilt and the penalty of sin forever. He gives the Holy Spirit to each of us as believers. And as that promise of eternal glory is to come, we now have that glory emanating in us and through us that we now can walk and shine like Moses did. To God be the glory. See, Christ has come. He has lived and died and has been resurrected. And the old covenant is fulfilled. It offers no more glory. The glory of the new covenant outshines it so brightly as it makes the reflected glory of the old covenant completely disappear. The glory of the new covenant shines even brighter than what the old covenant could bring about. Question seven says, what did Paul say about the old covenant in comparison to the new covenant? In verses 10 and 11, Paul is saying the glory of the old covenant is of no comparison to the new covenant. The new covenant exceeds the old covenant because Christ came. And because he came and fulfilled everything concerning the old covenant, meaning he satisfied all its demands, he lived the law in perfection. He satisfied the old covenant. And as a result of that, we now are under the new covenant. And the new covenant offers God's glory to people for free through faith in Christ's perfect life. Yes, because Christ came and lived the perfect life and died for our sins, we now have access to the glory of God through the new covenant. And this is what Paul is trying to get us to see here. The glory of this covenant far outshines the glory of the old covenant. And this is what we want to go in and start to emanate in our lives, the new covenant. Verses 12 through 18 read, 
Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech, and not as Moses which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look at the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remained the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. Question 8 asks, what is the basis of the Christian hope according to Paul? The new covenant allows us to be bold in our faith because Christ secured victory over sin on the cross. This is the hope, brothers and sisters, that we have eternal life in because Christ died and rose on that third day. And because he rose into eternal life, we believe and have faith that we too will die and rise again into eternal life. Yes, Christ defeated the power of sin and the bondage of sin on that cross. So the old covenant by design caused men and women to become deeply aware of their own sinfulness and their inability to do what was right before God. And this resulted in a lack of confidence before God. The new covenant, though, it removes all of that from the people who trust and put their trust into the Lord. We realize it's not because of our own ability to do right. See, as believers, we're not able to come and be confident in ourselves. Because we know in ourselves we cannot save ourselves. No, we place confidence in the work that Jesus did on the cross. We put confidence in now in the power of the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us to all truth, to intercede for us, to make us become what God wants us to be. Because we come to God in Christ, who is perfect and sinless, we do not need to be put a veil over our face. We don't need to come before him all covered up. We have the hope that as we are in good standing and we now have the peace of God with us because of what Jesus did on the cross, the word hope here means that we don't have to wish for anything. It means we can come in confidence. We come in confidence that God will keep his promises, that everybody who puts their faith in Jesus Christ will be saved and also have a relationship with him. Question 9 asks, why can't we be bold in our proclamation of the gospel? It's because the victory of the new covenant gives us over sin. It, this is what causes us to be bold. We know that the blood of Jesus Christ has covered us. And because it has covered us, we now can be bold in our proclamation of the gospel. Knowing that it is the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of him dying for us on the cross, it now saves us. To God be the glory. Question 10 asks, what does the fact that this glory faded from Moses' face tell us about the old covenant. Nobody can see God's glory because of this veil created by sin. The veil of misunderstanding remains over one's heart until one's sin are forgiven through faith in Jesus Christ. Then the veil is removed so one can finally see and understand the glory of God in Christ. We cannot remove this veil ourselves, no matter how sincere we want to or how diligently we study, or how desperately we try to obey the word of God. Our sin stands in the way, keeping us from God's glory. But Paul now adds, when a person turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. It is replaced by the rock-solid hope of sharing in God's glory for eternity. But the veil is only removed through Jesus Christ. There's no other way to be free from it. The one and only way by which we are free From this veil of separation between us and God is to understand that it has to be Jesus Christ to remove it from us. We must trust in what Christ did on the cross. We must trust that the blood he sacrificed, it covers every sin that we can ever have. Sin is the very thing that holds the veil in place. It is the forgiveness of sin that removes the veil. See, the power to remove the veil and open human minds to God's glory comes through the Holy Spirit. We come to know that there's freedom from the veil that keeps people from seeing God. And through faith in Christ and the power of the Spirit, 
The veil is removed and God's glory is revealed in Christ. We want to share in that glory. We see in that verse 18, Paul comes back and said, glory to another or from glory to glory. Not only are those in Christ finally are free, we're free to see God's glory. We're free to experience God's glory. We become God's glory as we become like Christ. We cannot accomplish this on ourselves. We need the Spirit of God to help us along on this journey. This is why Christ left us the Holy Spirit to help us to become what God wants us to be. Yes, this is the process of sanctification. That as the Holy Spirit's job is to sanctify us, to mature us, to become what God wants us to be. To God be the glory. As we see here now, as we finish the lesson and come to the end of it, we see now, yes, the new covenant far out exceeds the old covenant. We now have a means to connect with our God, to also be like Moses, to have that glow of glory shining through us because we now have the glory of God within us. Our glory won't fade. Our glory will last eternity. It will last a lifetime. Why? Because of who's on the inside. Moses only had it on the outside and because he came into the presence of God. But think about it now, brothers and sisters. We have God living on the inside. And because he lives on the inside, he shines ever so brightly on the outside. To God be the glory. When that concludes our lesson today, I hope that you've enjoyed it. Please, also, give us some feedback. Give us some feedback about ministries that you would like to have, like for us to provide, and also give us some feedback on the lesson today. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Well, that's all for this week. Come back next week. Same time, same channel. Be blessed now.